Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase it immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 85. Day 3085. 3 is to signify that uh, we are into third edition. Third edition, day 85. We are on page number 294. And today we'll discuss the notion of central tendency. Central tendency. Majors of central tendency. What does it mean? Central tendency. Well, it simply means that when you have a set of data, a set of observation, we, want, we would like to know where do the data tend to cluster? Where do they tend to come together? Where do you find most of them? In what neighborhood? Where do they tend to cluster? And we already know the concepts, obviously. The, the least sophisticated and the one that requires the least amount of work is the mode. Is the mode. It requires the least amount of work because we don't have to do anything at all. We simply have to see, look at the data and see which one appears the most time. Whichever observation appears the most time, that's the mode. The next one requires a little bit of work, which is the median. As you know already, median simply means the middle one. So here we have to arrange our data set either in the ascending order or descending order either from least to greatest or the greatest to the least and find out which one sits right in the middle where half the observations are below it and half the observations are above it and that middle one is called the median which we already know which we, of course they are all simple concepts and the uh, one among the three that is the most sophisticated one is the mean because it requires some work we have to add up all the observations and divide by number of observations these are all simple things let's look at an example Here's an example, 4.2.1, 4.2.1, and it simply says, what is the mean, what is the mean of these data, 6, 4, 7, 10, and 4. Now we could actually go about the traditional way, the conventional way, the orthodox way, the classical way, which is to add up all the numbers and divide by number of observations. Simple enough. We could do that. And you can do that if you like on your own. I'm not going to do that here. Let's just look at the data. 6, 4, 7. I'm just going to pretend the average is 6. Okay, stay, stay with me. We're going, to be, we're going to pretend. We're going to pretend. We're going to pretend. That's what it is. We do not know. We're just going to pretend that the average is 6. In other words, we're going to pretend that everybody has six dollars exactly. Everybody does not have six dollars exactly. Think it, think, think it in terms of dollars. This always makes it easy. But everybody has six dollars, and this guy's uh, this guy doesn't play any role because he has six dollars. This guy is two dollars short. We have to give him two dollars. He's two dollars short. This guy has surplus of three, or rather surplus of one, because we're pretending the average is six. This guy has a surplus of four. He has a surplus of. 4, positive 4, so that's by the surplus, and he is $2 short. Well, there you go, this is very simple. If the, he is $2 short and he is $2 short, that's a deficit of two. $4. That's a deficit of $4, right here, $2 and this $2, right here, $2 and $2. And here we have a surplus of $4. They kill each other, they, don't, they negate each other. What are we left with? We are left with a surplus of $1. That extra $1, in order for everybody to have the equal amount of money, which is what average means, is a very egalitarian concept. And we started out by pretending that we have, if we were to add up all the money, if we were to take money from everybody and just divide equally among these people, that everybody would get $6. It turns out that everybody did get $6, and we are still left with $1. Well, what do we do with that $1? We well, divide it evenly among the number of people. So we pretended that the average was 6, but we have $1 left over, which needs to be divided among 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 people. Well, there you go, the average is 6 and 1 fifth. The average is 6 and 1 fifth. We are no longer pretending that is the average. The average is, uh, we are no longer pretending that's what the average is. There you go. That's your average. Now, if you don't, if you don't think the average was 6, maybe if you thought that the average was a little bit lower than that, we could have started out by pretending that the average is 5, if you like. 
or seven, doesn't matter. It's, you will always get the same thing. If we started out by pretending the average was instead of instead of six, if we if we had started out by pretending that the average is five, in which case this guy has a surplus of one, this guy has a deficit of one, they kill each other. This guy has a surplus of two, this guy has a surplus of five. Remember, we're pretending that the average is five, and this guy has a deficit of one. You with me so far? Two plus five is seven. Seven minus one is six. So we have a we have a Average of 5. I have to make sure that I'm paying attention. He has a surplus of 1, deficit of 1, plus 2, plus 5, and minus 1. 2 plus 5 is 7. 7 minus 1 is 6. So we have a surplus. We have a... We have a... 6 minus 1. I did something wrong. I'm, I have to catch my mistake here. Yes, that's right. One, two, three, four. There are five people, not six people out. Okay, stay with me in the story. So we started out. We started out by pretending, we pretending that uh, the average was five. Well, it turns out that if we pretend that we have six extra dollars left over, that six extra dollars that we just found and left over, we thought that the average was five. We thought that the average was five. It turns out that if we do that, then we have a leftover of six dollars, which needs to be divided by five people because there are five people. One, two, three, four, five. 5 and 6 fifths is the same as 6 and 1 fifth, which is exactly what we just found. Let's do the next one, shall we? We'll have fun. We'll just have a few of them. 4.2.2. It says, what is the mean of what is the mean of 2, 4, 4, 5, Seven, 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 eight, eight, nine, 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 nine. Here, what they actually want you to do is to use what is known as the weighted average. We have to assign the weights. We have two one time, we have four two times, so there's two fours. Then we have a five just one time, we have two eights, then we have I know I left out seven, I'll come to it. We have four nines and I left out seven, two, four, six, six, seven. And then divide by the number of observations. And we can do that if you wanted to. There is nothing wrong with it, but uh, it'll be too tedious. Let's start out, let's let's do something different. So we have let's do something different. We have two, four, four, five, and then a whole bunch of sevens, six sevens. And can you guess? Can you guess what we can assume the average is? The seven, so that we can knock all of them down, all of them out, and then nine, 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 nine. So let's pretend that the average is seven. If the average is seven, these guys already have seven dollars. They play no role. They play no role. This guy needs five dollars. This guy needs three dollars. This guy needs three dollars. This guy needs two dollars. You with me so far? He has a he has a surplus of one. He has a surplus of one. He has a surplus of two. Surplus of two. And surplus of two. And surplus of two. If you're going to pretend that the average is seven, are you with me so far? Very good job. So, right away, I see a negative 2 and a positive 2, let's knock them down. Or better yet, or better yet, we see a negative 5, negative 5 and a negative 3, which is negative 8. Let's knock out this negative 8 with this positive 8. Well, they're gone. Let's knock out these, let's do it in different color. Let's knock out this plus 1 and plus 1, 2, with that 2. There you go, we're done. We still have a deficit of 3. It did not work out. It did not work out. What we did is, we went through the entire room and we collected everybody's money. Whatever they had, we collected it. This guy was sitting with $2, this guy was sitting with $4, these guys were sitting with $9. We took everybody's money and we put them in a pot and we just assumed that we should be able to give everybody $7 on average. But that's the average. We can assume that because everybody has to, equal, has to have equal amount of money. That's what average means. It's a very egalitarian concept as we said before. So we started giving our $7 to everybody. By the time we got to the last guy, by the time we got to the last guy, we realized that we cannot give him seven dollars. We can only give him four dollars. He needs to be given three more dollars. Where is it? Where are the three dollars going to come from? So we, what we're going to do is we're going to go around the room and collect some money from each everybody, everybody, including this guy. Everybody's going to contribute something in the pot until the three dollars are put in the in the pot, and we're going to give it to him. So let's count how many people there are. Let's count how many people there are. See what happens. So we have. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, and 16. 
there are 16 people, which means everybody has to contribute 3 sixteenths of a dollar. Everybody has to contribute 3 sixteenths of a dollar. And we'll have three dollars, including this guy. This guy is also going to give 3 sixteenths of a dollar. So we thought that the average was 7, but it is not 7. It is 7 minus 3 sixteenths. It is 7 minus 3 sixteenths. 7 minus 3 sixteenths, we can figure out what that is. 7, of course, is same as 6 plus 16 sixteenths. 7, of course, is same as 6 plus 16 sixteenths, minus 3 sixteenths. That's our average. That's the average of the group. And therefore, the average for this, this set of data is 6 and 16 minus 3 is 13, 13 sixteenths. And there is your average. That's the average for this data set. Do you understand? Let's go to move, let's move on to the next one. 2.4.3. 2.4.3. It's a very simple concept, and if, if you were to somebody, if you were to tell somebody that I watch a lecture on on mean on average, they will laugh at you. Everybody knows what a mean is, but do they? They do it manually. They do it uh, by brute force. Well, that because you have to understand what's going on behind. It's a simple concept, but you have to understand it. Let's do one more. Four point two point three. Four point two point three. On the next page, on the top of on the top of page 295, we're no longer at 294. It says, what is the median of 6, 4, 7, 10, and 4? Well, in order to find the median, we have to put them in order. So let's put them in order. We get 4 and a 4, 4 and a 4, then a 6, then a 7 and a 10. There you go. The median is 6. Simple enough. Then they go on to ask us, what would be the average? Listen very carefully. What would be the average if we were to replace this 10, if we were to replace this 10 with 24? It, with 24. The question says, what would be the new average if we, if we take the... If we take this data set we, that we did in the first problem, 4.2.1, that we just finished doing, 4.2.1, and if you remember, we found the average originally when it was 10, when it was 10, 4.2.1, we found that the average was 6 and 1 fifth. We just found it a little while ago. The question is, what happens to the average if instead of 10, if it is 24? Let's find out, shall we? Let's find out. Well, if instead, of, if instead of 10, if it is 24, then of course we understand that 24, of course, is the same as what we had before, 10, plus an extra $14. Plus an extra $14. And when it was 10, the average was 6 and 1 fifth. Remember that. Now we have 14 extra dollars. What do we do with that 14 extra dollars? Well, of course, distribute that, distribute that extra money equally among the number of people. How many people do we have? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 people. So the new average is going to be... The new average is going to be whatever the old average was, 6 and 1 fifth, plus we have 14 extra dollars, this 14 extra dollars, which needs to be divided among 5 people. There we go. So it becomes 6 and 1 fifth and 14 fifth is going to be 15 fifth, which of course is 3. So the new average is 9. Well, the new average is just 9. Nothing to it. Let's go on to the next one. 4.2.4 4.2.4 deals with mode. What is the mode of what is the mode of well we need to erase all of this thing, we can't just leave it here. What is the mode of 1, 3, 6, 4, 3, and five. And what does mode mean? Mode means most frequently appearing figure. The most frequently appearing figure here is three. It appears twice. There you go. That's your mode. Let's do part B. Part A. Part B. What is the mode of the following series? One, two, three, 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 seven, ten, ten, and, and finally, 20. 
what's the, what's the mode of this series? Well, again, whichever number that appears most often is the mode. Except here, there are two figures that appear equal number of times. Three appears three times, and so does ten. Ten appears three times. Such a series is known as bimodal. Such a series is known as bimodal. It has two modes. It has, it has two modes. Three and ten. Three and ten. Tell you what, if you are interested in doing these kind of problems for average, just to just to speed up, just to understand how to figure out the averages very quickly, I'm going to give you a couple of sources. I'm going to give you a couple of sources. Let's put them here. Watch. Basic math. Basic math. Day sixty eight to seventy five and day ninety three and ninety four. Day sixty eight to sixty five or sixty eight to seventy five, and those are eight videos there, eight videos, and then I did two more, ninety three and ninety four. It's a series that you'll find on my channel. It's just called Basic Math. It's not GRE Math. It's just called Basic Math. Just search for in the in the, in the search, uh, search search box. Just type in Basic Math Day 68. It, it will pop right up. And if it doesn't, if you're looking for some concept and if you don't find it right away, uh, the, the, my work, then just type in my name along with it. Just type in Basic Math Day 68. If it doesn't pop up, type in Day 68 uh, Basic Math Day 68 and then Keshwani. Watch those videos, there are 10 of them as I said, you don't have to watch all 10 of them, just watch 2 or 3 if you like, until you're bored as hell. Do you understand? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.